Pearson Cater. <laughs> he has fans with signs. <laughs> That's spectacular. Someone tweet that. All right, our next speaker is Tyler Olson. Tyler, uh, when, he was, when he was picked up by the Secret Service for the second time, he decided that he needed to do some investigation into what hackers are and are not capable of. And he's been doing that research, and he's coming to us with his solutions tonight. Please welcome to the stage Tyler Olson. So when I first entered college, I thought it'd be fun to hack all the printers on campus. <laughs> and after the first snowfall, I decided, well, maybe I should print Happy Snow Day. School's closed. And that was a lot of fun. People laughed. It was a great story. Uh, this is the first time I've admitted that. Uh, second, I then decided to hack the key fob software on campus to give myself access to lots of areas, buildings. <laughs> Pulled a few pranks, and that was fun. There are two billion people uh, in the last 12 months that have had some sort of records compromised. Verizon Wireless users, Yahoo users, LinkedIn users, Adult Friend Finder users, really American citizens in general, have had a lot of breaches in the last 12 months. Typically, it's China, Russia, ourselves, America, organizations like Anonymous, and that kid down the street, maybe even your own kid. That happens a lot, actually. And so, you know, these hackers are looking for a challenge at first. It just goes with the personality type. And uh, they're looking for passwords to maybe build botnets, to get fame and notoriety online. And once they figure out there's money involved in this industry, it becomes addiction. Uh, and how they do this is people like us are using the same passwords all over the internet. We're not letting our, we're letting our antivirus software expire. We're turning off updates on our computers. We're clicking bad links. We're making it really easy for hackers to get into our lives. We have lots of life choices. We can click that red X or back to safety. No matter where you click, you're going to download a virus. In this scenario, you have to control, delete, end that process. Otherwise, they're into your life. On this screen, it's an old screenshot. There are seven download now buttons. 95% of the time when I ask people which one's the right one, they get it wrong. There are websites like this out there. Again, we have to be mindful of which button to click. This is an email uh, uh, similar to what my bookkeeper received recently, which looks like an invoice. That's actually an image. It's not an attachment. When you click it, uh, it downloads a virus. Uh, she also got an email recently asking for an immediate wire transfer that looked like it was from me, and it wasn't. It was just two weeks ago. This is last week. Um, People get emails that look like Google Docs. And when you click through, uh, it looks like Google Docs is trying to access all your email, all your contacts. You hit allow, all of a sudden, all of your friends get spammed as well. We have life choices. And, and many emails have confirm your email address. LinkedIn, your bank is never going to ask you to confirm your email address. Please don't click those links. You can see some hints up here of what might cause that. This is a fun one, I think, where someone tweeted to PayPal looking for help to log in. And a fake PayPal account tweeted back with a link saying, click through. And when you click through, it's a fake PayPal site. They now have your access. Ultimately, even if you're really good at technology, we're still screwed. <laughs> because apple.com and Cyrillic is that web address. It's going to look like it's apple.com, and this is the site it goes to. Fortunately, it's a good guy saying, we have to be mindful of this. It's hard to do this. Now, Cornell University says that since Windows 95 came out, an average internet user has clicked a mouse three and a half million times. And I'm going to bet a few of us have clicked a few bad links. Uh, have we not? So it's best to assume that you've been hacked. Somebody's got access to your passwords, your secret answers to your security questions, to your email potentially, to your life. And we have to protect ourselves. This is really important for national security, for family security, for personal security. Here's some things we can do. We can update everything. Now, I know Windows always wants to update right during your workday. 
It's miserable, but we have to let it update once in a while. It's just really important because this is how hackers get in. We have to use complex and unique passwords. I use a tool called LastPass to make sure that my uh, phone, my tablet, my computer passwords all sync uh, so that it's easy for me to log in because if one account is compromised, I don't have to worry about a different account being compromised. We also need to be skeptical of public Wi-Fi's. I will never log into an airport Wi-Fi because I'm going to assume if I'm a hacker, that's what I'm going to hack. Um, and we just got to be careful. Hotspots are available on most phones today and uh, that's a much more secure connection. Ultimately, please don't click these bad links. It's for your own protection. Uh, there's so many ways for hackers to get into your lives and it's not a good thing for any reason. So please, please slow down. Be thoughtful about every button you click because it could greatly impact your entire life. Thank you.